to another episode everyone. Today we'll be testing and replacing the EGRC solenoid valve and very simply we need really two components to make this happen. Number one is we need a multimeter, specifically the volt setting. So if you don't have a multimeter but you do have a voltmeter, you will be okay uh, for this uh, test. That's number one. And number two, we need to use two leads and you'll see why in a couple moments uh, or in a few moments why you really need one of these guys. So that being said, let's go ahead and let's begin. Now the EGRC solenoid valve lives right here in the engine bay. Now there are so many components uh, very close to each other, you really have to make sure you're looking at the right thing. Don't try to memorize it. In a, vi in a previous video I mentioned how I, m how I memorized where certain components were and really what I should have done was print it out exactly where everything is. So don't make that mistake, just make sure you verify exactly where the sensor is. So in this case, it happens to be right here, this guy. So again, if you are doing this on an older Maxima, here's your uh, air box, your throttle body, and just look to the left, follow this wire right here, and there's your EGRC solenoid valve. The main function of this valve is in this metal body here, there's a plunger that moves back and forth depending on what the car's computer is telling it what to do. So, uh, Essentially, there's two sources of where uh, the vacuum goes. Either it goes to the throttle body or it goes to the EGR valve, and all that depends on this plunger moving. So if you are receiving a code P1400, it is probable that the, uh, this plunger has stopped working. However, there could be other things as well. Maybe there's a problem of uh, power getting to the sensor. In other words, maybe you have a split somewhere in this wire harness or maybe a fuse have, has been blown and you need to replace the fuse. So just don't go out and purchase the sensor until you pinpoint exactly where the problem is. And I'll show you how you can do uh, different tests and pinpoint exactly what you need to do, address the problem and get your car back up and running. So the first test that I'm going to show is, let's check to see if power is getting from the vehicle to the sensor. And to do that, we'll unplug this harness connector and do a voltage check. And before we begin, just make sure that the ignition key is turned off. And what we're going to do is remove this harness from the sensor. There's a tab here, just press down on the tab and pull on the body. Okay, pull on the plastic body, don't pull from the wire. Just pull from the plastic here. And again, this is the tab right here. You just press it down and it comes right off of, uh, of the sensor. Now for this next step, we're going to use a multimeter Specifically, we need the volts setting. And what we're going to do is turn the ignition key to the on position. You won't crank the car, just turn the key to the on position. And if you've never used a multimeter, uh, they are very easy to use. Essentially, you have two leads, as you can see here. A black lead, which is for your negative or ground, and a positive lead, which will go to this uh, connector right here, or the harness connector. So place this on ground. Ground means any metal part on the vehicle. You can also use the negative terminal on the battery. I know some people say you shouldn't. I do it, I have no problems with it, but if you're worried about it, just use uh, ground, or again, that's any metal part on the vehicle. And then what we're going to do, you have two connectors or two uh, inputs here. You have one input here, and then there's a second input here. We're going to check it with the second input in this case. And we should see battery voltage around 12 volts. And as you, do, as you can see, we are receiving 12.1 volts. So this just verifies that power is getting from the vehicle to the sensor. Now, if you're not receiving a reading, real quick on the back here, of course, with these two wires going into the harness, make sure that they're not frayed maybe they're damaged, maybe they've melted, make sure that they're in good shape and that you can clearly see the metal prongs. As It may be a little hard for you guys to see, but I can clearly see the two metal prongs uh, in this connector. Sometimes if, if you pull on this harness wrong or maybe in the past someone did something wrong and this metal clip is not pushed all the way through this harness. In other words, instead of the clip being up here, maybe it's only halfway that could be a problem. So just make sure you, you actually see 
the two metal clips inside of this harness connector and just make sure that the wires look okay. If they do, then you have to uh, track down the fuse. <clears throat> There's a 10 amp fuse in, for this vehicle that makes this work. Uh, that's most likely your problem. Very rarely it could be something with the ECM, but I would first check with the fuse. If anyone out there has a Nissan, uh, feel free to send me a message. I can tell you exactly which fuse to look for. Again, this happens to be a 10 amp fuse. Uh, but that being said, most of the times it's either a fuse or just the uh, the wires back here are no longer in good shape. Now, once we once you verify that you are getting power to this harness connector, then we need to check the sensor itself. Now for this next test, we're going to apply power, 12 volts worth of power to that sensor. Now when you do this, just make sure you do this very carefully. In this case, we're going to use obviously two leads. If you can, build it in a, uh, add in a fuse in this line. Uh, I unfortunately don't have a fuse, so I'm good, I'll just have to be very careful when I do this. But really you should build in a fuse just in case if you do cross the negative and positive power you won't short out anything and you'll blow the fuse uh, but that being said i'll just be extra cautious but really do yourself a favor and put in a fuse but that being said just you're going to attach the positive lead in this case to the battery and then the other clip goes to the first terminal the first terminal let me get a screwdriver the first terminal happens to be this guy right here. It's the furthest one toward the driver's side. So you have one terminal here and a second terminal right there. So in this case, we're going to be uh, testing the, uh, or providing the positive lead to this first terminal. So we'll take the lead, apply it to the first terminal. And then what I'm going to do is there's a rubber boot over the end of this alligator clip and I'm just going to push it down so that it covers the entire lead. In other words, I want to make sure that the positive and negative don't cross whatsoever. So this rubber boot will just make sure that I won't have a problem. Then you're going to get your negative lead, attach it to the negative terminal on the battery. like so and then the negative lead will go to terminal 2 here and we should hear a clicking noise if we do the valve is working correctly if we do not hear a clicking noise then the valve is bad so let's go ahead and give it a shot here we do have a clicking noise let me come in for a closer view just in case you guys can't see this So as you can clearly hear, let me just undo this. This valve is working correctly. If you don't hear the plunger move inside this body, then the valve is bad. And it's very simple to remove. Just remove the vacuum hoses. There's a harness or a mount that this attaches to. And you just remove the sensor.